Hi, my name is Christy. Welcome back to my channel where I take old things and turn them into new things. And if you're anything like me, you've been wearing a lot of pajamas recently. I just had a conversation about the importance of having day pajamas and night pajamas. So I went thrifting recently and found a couple items that I want to transform. And the first one was a purple dress that the fabric is just so soft. Like it should have been pajamas from the start. So I'm gonna give that garment the life that it was supposed to live and turn it into pajamas. So I would appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel and like the video, share with your friends, comment. I am still learning, so please comment and help me. So uh, if you're ready, I'm ready. I'm so excited. Let's get started. Thanks for being here. Here is a purple flower dress that I thrifted from Goodwill and I think it's an extra large so there's lots of fabric to work with and the fabric it's super super soft like they totally missed the mark on making this a dress it should have been pajamas so that's what I'm gonna do make it into pajamas I'm gonna pattern the pajamas from a huge pair of really comfortable boxer shorts compliments my husband that he's no longer allowed to have and a tank top that fits nicely. So here I am folding it in half so that the butt side is out and laying perfectly flat so I can chalk around the edges. When I get to the top part, since there's already elastic in the boxer shorts, I just need to stretch it out so that I can get the full amount so that when I add elastic later, it'll still fit. Now that I've made a chalk outline of the back of the shorts, I need to add a half inch seam allowance. And I didn't want the shorts as long as they were, so I'm only gonna add seam allowance to the two sides and leave the top and the bottom as is, and just have the seam allowance built in so that it shortens it that way. I just got a new pair of rotary cutters, which they are so sharp and so cool. I'm never using scissors again. Um, oh, and by the way, I am cutting through two layers of fabric here, so I'm making two back halves. And do the same thing for the front. Now I folded the shorts so that the front side is towards the front, I guess, is that how you say it? And then chalk around the edges, making sure you stretch at the top, add the seam allowance, and then cut out the two front pieces. This gives me two back side pieces and two front side pieces. Now on to cut out the top. I guess I cut out the bottom weird because I was left with this strange piece of fabric. So I cut it at the sides and the top so I could have basically two pieces of fabric to work with for the top of the pajamas. The back of the dress had a seam running down the middle. So I'm just gonna keep that as the back of the pajama top. Basically just doing the same thing that I did for the shorts, fold both the fabric and the tank top in half, line it up along the fold, chalk around the edges, and the bottom was a little bit shorter than I wanted it to be just because I cut the shorts out kind of funky, but um, just kind of doing my best here, cutting around the edges, adding a seam allowance as I go. Repeating the same process for the front of the pajamas, lining up the front folded tank top along the fold, chalking around the edges, including a seam allowance, cutting along the edges, loving this rotary cutter. And there's the front. So what I'm trying to do here is I have two backside pieces of the shorts and two front pieces, and I'm trying to line up one back piece and one front piece at the crotch, they really just aren't pretty terms when making shorts. And it, yeah, it's, it's hmm, trying to figure this out. There we go. Okay, so I have a front piece lined up to a back piece, right sides together so that I can sew along the inseam. I guess that's a nicer word. So I also just got a serger, big day, rotary cutter and a serger. And this is my first time using it. And, Seriously, this machine is terrifying. Just listen to how scary this sounds. Like 
seriously, why does it hum like that? That's terrifying. And by the way, the, it still has the thread that it came threaded with. That's why it's all crazy colors. But I think it looks good, very professional. So obviously doing the same thing to the other side of the inseam. Next, with right sides together, line up both backs and both fronts so that I can serge along the U. I wanted to make the boxer short style a little more feminine, so I'm deciding to do a little curve along the side. So just eyeballing a what looks good, I guess, cutting it out, and then I'll use that piece as a template for the other side. Swirl it around to the other side so I can do the exact same thing. Before I attach the shorts at the side, I need to serge the leg holes by going from one curve that I just made to the other curve. So I've marked it in chalk. This machine still terrifies me embracing that fear and surging the other leg hole, being careful not to go past those chalk marks that I made. To make it easier to finish the leg holes, I'm using my iron to create a good solid fold. Really, I'm just being lazy and I don't want to use pins. Next, I use my regular sewing machine to sew a line right along the surged hem that I just created, being sure to backstitch at the beginning and the end. It is a long trip around each side, but clearly I wanna do that to both leg holes. Starting to look good. With right sides together, it is time to serge along the sides of the shorts. Now that the shorts are almost finished, I just need to sew the elastic around the top. Now, I don't know why I picked this really thin elastic. I think I was thinking because it's pajamas, I wanted it to be really comfortable. I don't. It, wrong choice. Anyways, um, so I've taken a length of elastic and fit it snugly around my waist and then attached the ends. And here I'm pinning it to the four corners of the short so that it has an equal amount of stretch between each quadrant. These shorts are enormous. So after I took the time to stretch and sew the elastic and then fold it over again and sew it again, I tried it on and they were huge. So it, I just needed to seam rip it out and start over. Oh, the thread carnage. Thin elastic out, half inch elastic in. I'm also going to do a different method. So that's why I didn't want to show you too much of how I sewed on the previous elastic. So what I've done is I have surged around the entire top of these shorts. Oh, and you'll see the nice color change because my serger ran out of the green thread mid trip around. So I got a crash course in how to re-thread a serger. So fun. Anyways, um, I have surged around the top, like I said, and now I am folding over and stitching around just like I did to the bottom of the shorts. And here is where I found out that about two inches back, my bobbin thread ran out. Seriously? Oh boy. So I fixed my boo-boo and have folded down the top an inch so that it will encase the half inch elastic. Measure and pin all the way around. Leave about a two inch gap where I've cleverly marked with horizontal pins. Knock the camera, knock it back, and then sew all the way around except for that two inch gap. Be careful not to sew over any pins. It could damage the needle or break it.
attach a safety pin to one end of the elastic and then feed it all the way through. Make sure the elastic is not twisted, then safety pin the two ends together so you don't lose it. Sew together, box shape optional. Fold down the edge on that two inch gap that we left and all that's left is to sew it up. It was hard to tell which was front and which was back, so I sewed on a little lace tag. Moving on to the top, so in hindsight, I probably should have surged the sides later, but I didn't, so here we are. The sides are surged and now measuring the strap. So I had help measuring how long the strap should be and it came to about 14 inches, which at the time that seemed like that was kind of long. So it turns out it is, but that's what I had. So I went with 14 inches for the strap and now I'm just measuring along the rest of the armhole to make one continuous strap. You'll see. It came to 25 inches, so I rounded up to 26. Measure along the back of the tank top came to about nine-ish, so I rounded up to 10. Same for the front, also came to about nine-ish, measured to 10. I cut the two strap pieces and then the front and the back piece from the original hem of the dress to take advantage of the deep fold. So unfolded, it's two inches wide, folded, it's obviously one. So it, it, we're basically just making our own bias tape. So I fold it in half and here's where it's it, this confused me a lot. Um, so I've lined up that fold with the middle back seam and pinning along the top. So it's gonna eventually fold, well, you'll see. Basically just line up the bias tape to the top of the tank top. So, and we're using its right side to wrong side. So the right side of the bias tape will go against the wrong side of the tank top. I know, bias tape is confusing. I'm still not sure if I'm really doing this right, but what I'm doing is lining up the edge of the presser foot so that I'm sewing along the middle of that one strip of bias tape. Unfold the bias tape and make sure the seam is pressed up. Fold in half and then fold in half again so that everything is sandwiched between and pinned. Make sure everything lines up perfectly and then sew along that bottom edge of the bias tape. Without ironing, it looks like this. Moving on to the front, the exact same thing. Finger press, pin, sew, sew some more, fold, fold, pin, sew, sew again. Same concept for the actual strap. Line it up with a little bit of excess at that seam just below the armpit pin all along and then once you get to the part where the strap actually starts this is where you'll measure that 14 inches that you need for the strap and then just continue pinning along the rest of the way until you reach the original starting point. To sew fold down that little excess that we left underneath the armpit so that it makes a nice clean edge and then sew until you reach where the strap begins then stop. Do this for both sides. Same fold over and fold over again method, making sure to keep that nice clean edge we created. Once you've reached where the strap actually starts, it's pretty much the same as we've been doing, except just fold each half to meet that middle and then fold over again and that should make a nice seamless strap. After pinning all the way around, this is what it looks like. So all the way around through the armpit to the strap and over the strap and then back to the armpit to make one seamless strap. And repeat on the other side. I used extra pins this time because it didn't quite sandwich the way I wanted to on the first strap. So when you get to that corner where the strap begins, Go very slow and make sure that everything is being sewn together. All that's left is the hem on the shirt. I decided to do the same way that I did the bottom of the shorts by just surging around the edge, folding over, and then finishing on the sewing machine. And I'm done. So here's the final product.
forget to subscribe to my channel and like this video for more adventures with my scary serger. Make it a great day. Thank you.